Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream and will feature spoilers for the Uncharted film. So I feel like the Uncharted movie was in development hell for like half my life. It went through a ton of directors, writers, and actors, and for a while I kind of assumed it would just never get made. But this month, Sony stepped up to the plate and finally proved me wrong, giving us an Uncharted from the director of Venom and the star of the recent Spider-Man films. Box office wise, it's doing great, far better than I expected honestly. But with critics, it's mostly been met with shrugs. Before seeing it, my expectations weren't high exactly, but I really did want to enjoy it. Anyone who watches this channel knows that I've really liked Tom Holland's Peter Parker performance, and even though a lot of his other film choices have been pretty hit or miss, I really do think he's an engaging actor. And while I wouldn't call myself the biggest Uncharted fan out there, I have really enjoyed those games in the past, with the second and fourth games being the ones that I probably spent the most time with. So with all that in mind, how did the movie actually turn out? Well, that's what I want to talk about this week, how I think this movie has some bright spots and some potential, but in the end is really held back by one too many problems for me to recommend, especially if you have any love for the source material. But I know opinions on this are all over the place. I want to read yours in the comments down below, and while you're down there, you know, why not subscribe? Either way though, it's time to just dig into this thing. For a chance to win epic trips and exclusive access to Uncharted 3! Get your code on 30 ounce drinks today! Okay, so I feel like I should just get this out of the way up front. My guess is that if you love the Uncharted games, especially if you love them for the characters, this movie is going to be a big letdown. The fact is, I recognize very little about the Nathan Drake or Sully of those games in this movie, especially when it comes to Mark Wahlberg's performance. Now, to be fair to the film, it is trying to be Nate's first big adventure, sort of adapting the fourth game, but serving as a prequel at the same time. So I guess it gets a little leeway there. But if what you're looking for is something that captures the spirit of the games, you're better off watching that random fan film that Nathan Fillion starred in a few years ago. I really think Fillion around the age he was when they filmed like Serenity in 2005 would have been perfect casting for game accurate Drake. But this movie just isn't that, and that's an issue you can either look past and take the movie on its own terms, or something that will be impossible to forgive, depending on your relationship to the games and what you want out of an adaptation. I went in with an open mind, so if it wants to do its own thing, I thought that was fine. But it does have a lot to live up to, because by and large, those were pretty well written games, and I just don't think it met those expectations. For one thing, this script is about as basic as you can get from an adventure movie like this. Uncharted, much like Tomb Raider before it, has always borrowed pretty liberally from Indiana Jones. You know what I mean, ancient artifacts, secret treasure maps, exotic locales, khaki pants. There's nothing wrong with that, I actually really love this subgenre. Give me a movie poster where someone is holding a big wooden torch, and I'm probably gonna watch the thing. But where Raiders of the Lost Ark built atop its 30s movie serial inspirations with great action set pieces, better pacing, and the directorial skill of Steven Spielberg operating at the height of his talent, movies like Uncharted and the recent Tomb Raider reboot just don't bring nearly as much to the table. There's so many things in this movie that feels like echoes of those first three indie films, and they often play like a photocopy of a photocopy. A good example would be Sully's bag of gold near the end of the film. We know from the moment he loads that backpack up with treasure that he's going to have to choose between the bag and his loyalty to Nate at some point in the last act. It really felt as inevitable as Lucy pulling the football away from Charlie Brown. It made me think of that great scene in The Last Crusade where Indy is so close to grabbing the Holy Grail until his dad tells him to just let go of it. On the surface, these are both very similar scenes, but I think it's a bit embarrassing for Uncharted how much more satisfying and emotional it is in The Last Crusade. No one will ever accuse the Indiana Jones movies of being super emotionally complex, heady films, but they accomplish the basics of adventure storytelling so much better. When Sean Connery's Henry Jones asks Indy to let the grail go, it really means something. This is a man who spent his entire life pursuing the grail, 
who sacrificed having any kind of relationship with his only son for decades to find it. But after the events of the film, he recognizes how hollow this pursuit actually was, giving us the moment where he matter-of-factly says that they don't need the grail. Indy's life is worth far more to him. Again, this isn't super complex stuff. It's basic, sturdy, blockbuster screenwriting. But it's a big part of what Uncharted lacks. Wahlberg's Sully making a similar choice just feels so underwritten, lacking the kind of emotionally satisfying closure of that moment in Last Crusade because we don't know nearly enough about Sully for this to carry much weight. All of this would be a lot easier to forgive if the movie had much in the way of style or flair, but well, there just isn't much. Most of the film is shot like it could be a USA Network show with a higher budget, with everything looking pretty flat, probably to make the CG work easier. And that CGI kind of feels like another issue. I actually like some of the more grounded action scenes, like Holland fighting his way out of an underground club by smashing people in the head with glass bottles. But when it tries to do its huge set pieces, everything comes off as being completely weightless. The setup at the end of the film is a battle on these two massive ships that are being dragged by helicopters, which sounds really cool and exciting on paper, but in execution it just feels so fake that it doesn't register as half as exciting as a single car crash in Mad Max Fury Road. And this isn't me just doing the CGI ruined everything argument. I would have loved this movie to have been directed by someone who's actually good at using CGI. There's a moment late in the film where Wahlberg name checks Jack Sparrow, and all I could think about in that moment was how much better the movie would be if Gore Verbinski, who did the first three Pirates films, had directed it. While those movies aren't perfect, they were directed with a ton of style, with a director and DP who cared deeply about the CG elements looking as good as they possibly could, filming around the technology's limitations and really accentuating its strengths. That's how you get Davy Jones in 2006, which still looks a lot better than most of the effects I see in 2022. I've been really harsh on the movie so far, but I do want to highlight a few positives as well. While I think the script infantilizes Nathan Drake a bit too much, Tom Holland is at least a lot of fun in the role. He makes his comedic moments work better than they really have any right to. And I think him and Sophia Ali's Chloe have some charming, if pretty underwritten chemistry. I like seeing Nathan Drake as a low-level thief at the start of the film, and I wish the movie wasn't so hellbent on making him squeaky clean. The game character is often an asshole, and I wish they had let Holland play that side of him a bit more, to really separate this from his take on Peter Parker. There's a moment later in the movie where he's tempted to leave Chloe behind and take the treasure for himself. She's already betrayed him once, so why not return the favor? I feel like this is the exact kind of choice a young Nathan Drake would make. But they don't want anyone to find this character unlikable, so they just refuse to pull the trigger on that. Instead, having Chloe fall for the most obvious ploy ever, with Nate leaving her fake coordinates. I really think they should have risked making Nate a bit more of a scoundrel if they do plan on making more of these. That evolution would have been really fun to watch. But he's already practically a saint by the midpoint of the movie here, barely tempted by the promise of staggering wealth. I mean, it's fine to have a simple square-jawed hero, but Nathan Drake was always a bit more than that. There's also something that just feels super cynical about the film. Obviously, big blockbusters are produced to make money, but when studios get too greedy, you end up with a battle inside a Papa John's. The product placement here makes the film feel really cheap. So much of the appeal of Uncharted, and really this whole subgenre, is the globe-trotting and the stunning locales. That's severely undercut when you stage your big fight in Barcelona inside a Papa John's. Just like 10 minutes of a really important scene plays out, but with the Papa John's menu lingering in the background. This is not like Chuck, some low-budget TV show that desperately needed the funding. This is a top-tier Sony property. There was no reason for them to shoot themselves in the foot like this. I know I keep leaning on Indiana Jones here, but seriously, think of that nice opening scene in Temple of Doom that's set in a classy Shanghai club. I'm kind of worried that if it was made today, they would just like stick that in a KFC. Maybe Indy could negotiate with a crime boss over a tasty donut chicken sandwich. Now, maybe I'm overreacting. After all, the James Bond movies have plenty of product placement. But those do a little better job of fitting into the world of James Bond. You know, fancy watches, cars, that sort of thing. I think it's a bit different to bring your globetrotting treasure hunting movie to a halt to have a whole scene take place inside a chain restaurant. The beginning of this film opened with a very slick new PlayStation Studios logo. 
but by the end of the film, I couldn't help but feel like I had more respect for the legacy and characters of Uncharted than the movie did. The image of Mark Wahlberg's Sully, who lacks almost all the charm of the game Sully, fighting over an ancient artifact in a Papa John's, is just a hard one to come back from. Crash Bandicoot. Is there a problem? No, no, just, uh, how do you, uh, how do you make it go? Push the start button. So YouTube isn't always the easiest place to upload videos to, especially with so many studios ignoring fair use rules. That's why I always want to highlight that I also put up my videos ad-free on Nebula, including a few exclusive ones on things like Hulk, Rick and Morty, and Cheers. This is a Streamy Award nominated service made by creators, and it features people like Nando V Movies, H Bomber Guy, Tirzu, and so many others. The best part is, it's bundled in with an amazing documentary streaming service, Curiosity Stream. I know one doc I can easily recommend if you love exploring history is Iceman, 200 Years in Antarctica. You combine that with their documentaries on nature, science, and tech, and you have a great offer. So when you sign up to Curiosity Stream, you'll receive an email welcoming you to Nebula as well. And you can get both services for just $14.79 for an entire year. So sign up now by going to curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight. That's curiositystream.com slash Captain Midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started. Because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.